Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Jessica Noel about a luckiest girl alive, premiering on Netflix October 7th. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. I want to know officially, you know. The book, you know, New York Times bestseller, um, it was announced that it's going to be made into a, a film for Netflix when it officially gets, when it's like officially official, basically, because there's a lot of talks and everything. What are those first preliminary kind of thoughts about it being adapted into a film? Oh, like finally. <laughs> I mean, it, it it's hard. It, it, I guess what was explained to me is like when a project is finally greenlit, it's not like you flick a switch and everything starts. It's up until the day that you are on set filming things, like there is still so much that could go sideways um, that you're a little bit on edge. You're a little like, please don't let COVID ruin this. Please don't let one of the actors get injured or have another scheduling thing come up and they have to drop out. And like you do hear these horror stories that things just happen because there are so many moving parts to making yeah. a film that all it takes is for one thing to go wrong and you know that's that's it that's your shot so um i think the the feeling is a very tentative uh excitement that is also yeah. threaded with caution and wanting to like protect yourself of not getting too too excited in case everything goes sideways <laughs> yeah because there's good there's always like the moving parts and yeah. it feels like it's it's almost like like of the roller coaster that just continues on right yeah like, I'm, still, I'm still on it currently <laughs> you're still on it it you know you you look at I'm, I'm just curious in terms of the writing perspective does the like the mindset I, I believe is is a lot different compared to you know writing a best-selling novel and then you know the movie specifically what are kind of what was that transition like for you specifically yeah i mean i was very dogged about being the one to adapt it myself um i just felt so protective of the story and of the character and i just the idea of somebody else writing it just made me like wild with envy like i could not stand it um, so I really pushed to be that person and I, I don't think I thought at any point like, oh, this will be easy or like I, I'll be able to do this with no problem. But I, I think as with any new challenge you take on, I don't think that you ever could imagine all the things you learn um, at the end of it. Like I am a better storyteller for having gone through se a seven year development process with this film. It's helped me yeah. in crafting my other books, in crafting other screenplays I write. Um, it's really matured me as a writer. Um, and you know, I'm so grateful for that. And also just so amazed at how much I didn't know. Um, and and just feeling like really proud of how much I, I've grown. I feel like you can answer this the same with the book versus the film, but I'm going to speak to the film because we're talking about the film coming out on Netflix October 7th, but this is a great film, but also this is an important film. Was that kind of theme for yourself specifically? I'm sure the, the team and everything, but like, was that kind of the top thing in terms of, you know, getting this out and for people to see like this is a very important film, Jessica. Thank you for saying that. I mean, I know other people on around me who are making this movie probably did think of it like that. I think I always have to go back to where I where this character and where the story started from. And it was six in the morning at my kitchen table in my New York City apartment before I went into my office job. And the only thing that mattered to me was getting onto the page this story that had haunted me for half my life. And whatever importance that comes from that um, is, is organic. Um, and I think is is able to come from that because it came from such a raw, vulnerable, honest place. Um, so that's kind of always how I've approached this story and this character. 
this is a big question. It's going to get a big answer, but there's going to be a lot to this. But you know, this this the book and the film have a lot of important messages that you know which many people will be able to resonate with i'm just like what was the your hope in writing this specifically luckiest girl alive yeah again it was just about telling this story that i felt i absolutely had to tell um and i think i think the response and i think my response to readers seven years ago, six years ago, when they were reading it and talking about it, I think I started to realize, and we have this moment in the film, like, oh my God, this is so much bigger than me, you know? And I, I just, I did not, it was so eye-opening to shift into that and to realize that like, this was affecting people, this was starting conversations among women I'd known many, many years that I had no idea that they had kind of these shared experiences with me. Um, and it's pretty unbelievable when you carry something around, you keep it to yourself, you're silent about it for so many years to finally talk about it and realize, you know, you're not alone and to have your story embraced the way it is. Absolutely. And a last question before we wrap up. The movie does an amazing job with the flashbacks and navigating from the past and the present, specifically for the movie. Was th What was that like specific? Because flashbacks have been used many yeah. different ways in TV and film. So what was the mindset for flashbacks specifically with Luckiest Girl Alive? Oh, they were so tricky to figure out. Um, and that was probably the part of the, of the adaptation that was the most challenging um and we said that like emotionally we needed to move into the past and sometimes that could just be a, you know a subtle moment and coming up with what that kind of subtle elegant moment could be was very very challenging um we had many try i mean there were so many different ways i tried to get to the flashbacks in many different versions of the script mike was really uh our director was you know really important in in helping us navigate those in a way that felt like everything flowed um and you know i think we always just wanted to feel like when the flashbacks happened it really felt like it was because Ani in the present is still living this story. You know, 17 years later, she's still, these, this memory of what happened to her in high school is with her every single day. Mm -hmm. um, and so you almost wanted to feel like you were, you were with her in the present when like she would kind of zone out, you know, no. and, and go back to this place and you would understand why the flashbacks had to be there because they were still a part of her everyday current life. Absolutely. Luckiest Girl Live is premiering worldwide on Netflix October 7th. Jessica, thank you so much for your time. It was really thank great you. chatting with you. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.